the National Day speech, I think most of us uh, watched it, uh, the PM uh, said that the retirement age will be raised to 65 and the re-employment up to 17. So I think some of us in, in this room uh, are actually working in organisations with already four to five generations uh, in the workplace. So uh, my question to you, panel, is um, you know the motivations of these different age groups might be different. How does one engage with different groups of staff in an organisation? If I may, I think really um, we are not we are looking beyond generations because even within a generation, people are motivated very differently. So it is critical to actually get to know your staff. And that's why we said earlier, immediate bosses, the leadership is so important. It's so important for leaders to know their staff, each and every one, how they are motivated and work towards that. Um, one thing for me that works across uh, all generations is that they, there must be a common sense of purpose. Um, if, if we engage, we listen to them, and yet we could engage them with what the common purpose that the organization is moving towards. I think it will help, help with the multi-generational community. So what you're saying, Alice, is that there's some core universal commonalities that generations share. One of them is actually that we know our staff well. And earlier on, actually, we talked about trust, mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, for us, because we do the uh, employee engagement for the once every two years, and the, there were a lot of data that we can look at. In fact, we can cut by demographics, you know, the job functions and things like that. And year after year, time after time, the older segment, the unhappiest bunch. The most unhappy one is actually the youngest. <laughs> and it's always like that. And the most happy one is always the director. <laughs> most people are always the most junior staff. Yeah, so year after year, regardless of which CE, new CEO, regardless of how we organize ourselves, so there must be some common track. So we figure out that you know, for the older ones, I think uh, what they want, actually what they're telling us is they're actually very happy. Um, but um, doesn't mean that we can take them for granted. No, I think um, we say no, let's go and do some focus group discussions you know, and see what can we do for them, even for them, even if they're a very happy bunch and how do we energize them. So actually from the focus group discussion, we realize that these people, they are happy, but they feel that they are not being appreciated in the organization. Yeah, so what we have done is actually we brought back some of the policy that we have published last time, like long service award. You know, we actually brought that back. And also, uh, when some people retire from working, like for example, they work for 30, 40 years, we made an effort to organize their own party and we make sure that at least there's one director present. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we do pay attention to people who are even in their most happy bunch. For the most unhappy bunch, like the you know, newer, you know, like oldest managers and all this, um, we, 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 do we actually say that, okay, never mind, uh, since they are so happy, unhappy, <laughs> let's let them go, it's nothing to do. <laughs> No, actually we still made an effort to try to understand what happened. So actually what we found out was that these people feel that the progression in the my company is actually very really slow. So just now I mentioned that we actually changed the progression, career progression philosophy for them. You know? So regardless of your performance, so long as you spend some time with us, at least two years or something like that, you get promoted. So we have changed some of this policy by just by looking at the data So I think for us, it's important for us always keep in touch with um, what they are telling us, even if the numbers actually show to be very positive. Thank you, Brie. So uh, engagement sounds like it's a journey, uh, something that we have to continually monitor and track, and also to uncover needs that might be there, whether it's a need for recognition or the need for progression. Um, I think for Benson, um, all generations appreciate certain interactions and I, I find that the first thing is to tell the leaders 
stop your emails, you know, just talk to the guys, increase the face-to-face -face time. And then they would tell me that, oh, Brendan, I'm very busy. My answer is very unfeeling and uncaring. I'm sorry, this is part of your duty. <laughs> I'm going to tag it to your KPI this year. So they have to do it, put it into their KPI, and you can see the change. When the interaction starts to increase across all generations, unless they are um, their Maori exposure or autistic, then that's a different, that's a different um, story altogether. Because they are engineers from my company who are autistic. So we will tell the managers that can you cut down your interaction with them. Uh, but other than that, that increase in interaction is very good. That's one thing. And make their interests your priorities. Because they can tell. And last but not least, we told the managers, anybody who doesn't know what Sesame Street is, okay, good. Then we are all above a certain age. <laughs> So I, I think it's very important to coach the managers to listen to Oscar the Grouch. You know, everybody needs to listen to that little green person complaining. Because when the management is too focused on happy feedback, when we are when there's a compulsion to only hear happy things, then there is a compulsion to accept things as they are. And that's horrible. If you accept things as they are, and then you shove or scar the grouch to one side, things don't change. They remain stagnant. So once in a while, you really need to listen to the guy who is complaining. Of course, find a very smart one. It's just a whole different twist to uh, Sesame Street now. <laughs> <laughs> to actually befriend the Oscars, you know, in our organizations. And you can actually listen to them because there will be some uh, insights or opportunities that they will share with us. And you know, as you mentioned, Brenda, nothing replaces the face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. the human touch.